Hey everybody, it's Trevor Celescu and I am so excited today because it's September 1st, which means that I can start working on this GoMad Nomad for the 2022 Deformed Cartoon Group Build. Now what I want to do today is I don't have very much time. I'm in the middle of making some commercials or basically information videos for the Monster Hobbies Build a Monster Contest, which is coming up in October. Actually, starting now, really. But uh, so what I'm, I want to build this thing. I've been wanting to build it forever. Been trying to build this with Pete as well and didn't work. So what I'm thinking of doing today is using my timer here. I will set it for 30 minutes and I'll see what I can do in the 30 minutes with this model. So let's go down to the bench and I'll start the timer and we'll get on the go. All right, here we are on the bench and now let's start the clock. There we go, the countdown's begun. So what I'll do is just, let's take a look in here and see what's going on. Now I did start to work with this with Pete on his channel, but I did not get far at all. So there's our instructions. Okay, here's the little body and the interior and the under pan. There's those snow white tires. I hope that'll uh, scrub off with some soap and water. So really what I've done is I've just glued the guy's head together and uh, he had to get his head together, of course. There's the glass components still in the bag. Now I got the surfboard and all that on the sprues and there's some more. I think basically just a couple of bits got clipped out. There's the radiator, um, the guy's arm, and then the chrome still in the bag and there's that other hand. So hopefully it's not too bad. It's only the guy really. Okay, now let me just move some of this out of the way and we'll put the clock up here. Hopefully you can see the numbers going down. Now I probably won't show the entire half hour in this video, but uh, that's more for me. So you guys can always take a look at that little clock and see where I'm at. Now let's just move all this out of the way. So I think what I need to do first really, let's see I've already got that done. So uh, and the radiator, it looks like I cleaned that up too. Okay, that's in the box. Now, how about this? Yep, still a bit of seam lines and stuff on the underpan. So what I want to do is I want to clean up the body first because I think, here, I think by cleaning up the body first, I've got a good chance to paint it. Now I deal with enamel paints. I don't have the uh, super fast dry acrylics like maybe some of the other YouTubers have out there. Maybe you have out there too. So what I have is enamel and this stuff dries forever and I like it. So I got some Model Master 50s Aqua sitting here as well as hot magenta. Now I don't really know how much is still left in these cans. They're from a long time ago. Chinook and Hobby West, that's no longer here anymore. Anyway, uh, I might use those, I might not. What do you think? Do you think 50s Aqua would be better? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so here I got the body. Now, let's see. There's some mold marks underneath there. Now, I remember somebody was saying to flock this, and that would make it look better. Might not be a bad idea if I have any flocking around. Okay, so... There's our number 16 hobby blade, and right away we have some seam... or mold marks right in there. And the other thing is I'm a bit of a disadvantage, you guys, because I wear glasses and I need to actually take them off and uh, be able to get up close like this with those glasses. And I'm stretching all the way across my uh, overhead camera booth here trying to do this. So I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go. Okay, so right away we've got some flash sitting in there. I'll come back to this with sandpaper, like I'll pull it off of the pad here and, and go in there because that knife's not really getting down in there. It's not getting down! Okay, on the funky side of town. Now let's see. What do I got left? 26 minutes. See, look at that. We're already three minutes in. Okay, let's just get rid of some of the flash right there. It's really bad along here. Okay. Here we go.
All right, checking for seam lines coming up along here somewhere. Now, uh, 57 Chevy, did it have a line coming up here and here? I can't remember. Or is that just a, a seam line should be rounded off? Kind of hate to scrape it off and then find out it should have been there. <laughs> uh, my Chevy reference book. I might have that. Hang on a second. I'm going to go grab it. No, wait. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Now, let's just go around. Let's uh, leave that for a minute. Gee, maybe I should make this run for the half an hour <laughs> in all its boring glory. <laughs> I don't know. Seam lines. How many of you like scraping down seam lines? Let us know in the comments down below. Okay. Now I've seen some people use actual uh, 125th scale 57 Chevy bumpers back here, and it ends up looking quite nice, actually. Now we do have some... Uh, little burrs here from I guess the parts tree yeah they don't look like they're uh, special lockdown tabs okay using this fine file here let's see now Feels kind of right. I think someone should hit that join button and maybe for the uh, $3 a month I can get some brand new hobby blades because these ones are hard. <laughs> I need some, something new here. Get the job done. No, anyway. Okay, so. Trying to round this out. My goodness. Seam lines, seam lines. I can feel the seam lines. So my girls are quite excited today because they got their first little paper roots. Now they've been covering for a friend of theirs, but but they recently filled out application forms and they got a root of their own almost like instantaneously. Now their friend had to wait six months to get a paper root, but my girls, they got it like the next day. <laughs> so it may just be because, uh, you know, people need to come up in the system, right? And uh, I also applied for a paper root job, and I got it too. So now both me and my girls are delivering papers to your door. Well, not everybody's door, but you know what I mean. 
So, I mean, it's not not much money, but I mean, I got to get out of the house once in a while, and, <laughs> you know, and for a kid, that's pretty good. So yeah, we'll see how long that goes. And the other thing that's kind of nice about it for me is that it's not interfering with uh, me running Monster Hobbies at all. Because, I mean, I think I can get those papers delivered in an hour, maybe two, depending on weather and everything else. And uh, it gives me enough time to step out on a Friday. The paper only comes out once a week out here. So that gives me that uh, Friday to uh, just duck out for like two hours, go get a little exercise, and uh, get that and most important paper out to the readership. <laughs> okay, so far so good. What do we got for time? 19 minutes? Now what I think I'll do is I will actually... Um, I will actually, if I can't get this all done in this video, I'll do it off camera for a few more minutes. But basically, this is how my first half hour of the 2020 deformed cartoon group build is going. How about you guys? Was it sort of like this? I hope so. <laughs> so upstairs right now, speaking of that paper route, we have... 100 and I think it was 90, oh, 193 papers between me and my girls. And yeah, we're gonna wake up tomorrow early in the morning and we're gonna deliver those things. <laughs> the girl's been so excited with this paper root idea that uh, basically applied on Monday. No, applied on. Yeah, I think we sent the guy an email on Sunday. And then we've been filling out forms, applied on Monday kind of thing. Got the job on Tuesday. <laughs> and my girls, we, we got maps showing where we're supposed to go. So we did a little walk around the neighborhood to familiarize ourselves with the area. And my girls went into their route like four times. <laughs> so it's been fun. How many of you had a paper route when you were young, or maybe returning to one like I am? Actually, I never had one. I covered for friends of mine in school that had them, but I never had my own. Until now! <laughs> Did I already do this? If so, let me know in the comments down below. I only got so many, so much time today, so hopefully I won't go on back over to the same job. Yeah, and I think I'll have to uh, bring this model up into my eyesight a little later on to make sure I'm actually scraping these seam lines, because <laughs> that's the last thing I need is to like paint this and something's like standing out or looking like, <laughs> you know, like in here. It's a problem with the semi-dull blade. But at any rate, I don't know, is this looking any better? I can't tell from back here. Okay, I see a seam line right there. It'd be nice to do this in a two-tone, but I don't know. Am I having fun? I don't know, it's not like Disneyland, you know, where you're going down a roller coaster or something like that and everyone's screaming. <laughs> How many of you have been to Knott's, Knott's Berry Farm? Raise your hands. Oh, I can see out there that there's a lot of hands raised. No, I don't know. Okay, let's use some sandpaper here. This is, a, I do believe this is either 300 or, or sorry, 320 or 400. Okay, feels a bit better. 
any seam lines up top here. I see them coming down here and going right around here. Feels better. You can always tell where the seam line is when you rub your thumb in there and you can feel it. Okay. Yeah, these Gomad Nomads, I've seen them done in lots of different colors. Of course, there's the one that Pete did, and there's also the one that Model Car Minion did. Hey, here's a, a question for all you people out there. So, recently, what, have, what has YouTube been doing, kind of, for you? Like, what have they been recommending and all that? I'm starting to get a lot of videos from, like, 2019 and, like, sometimes 2010 and 11. Really old stuff. So I'm kind of wondering if that's what you're experiencing as well. I don't know. If so, uh, let me know down in the comments below. My daughters were saying that they're seeing some stuff being recommended from, like, YouTube channels that are very very tiny with hardly anything on them all of a sudden those are appearing and you know so i'm kind of hoping that maybe my channels will <laughs> will catch a bit of this uh recommendation glory that's going on and maybe get a little bit of a a growth spurt especially coming up to christmas i think that's where i'm gonna shine but at any rate Oh, I should say, in our Build a Monster Hobbies Build a Model Car Contest, sorry, <laughs> wrong contest. I haven't run that one in a few years. I used to do that at the store. The Monster Hobbies Build a Monster Contest. It has a section in there for these kind of models, the deformed, uh, strange ones, the cartoon models. And... Uh, that includes all the Dave Deal and the Tom Daniels and all the rest. And the Build a Monster Contest is actually 13 categories. Because, of course, it's monster hobbies. You need, like, numbers like 13. <laughs> anyway, um, so in there... We have, uh, out of the box, and we've got... A, a, a one where um, you can do sort of an out-of-the-box modified. Now, a lot of these are also for, like, the Aurora monsters, like Wolfman, Dracula, Frankenstein, all those kind of models. You can enter haunted houses. You can also enter in, like, the um, TV and movie cars, that sort of thing. There's a sci-fi category. There's dinosaurs and prehistoric scenes. Uh, there's all the monster scene stuff from Aurora that they used to have. Like, basically anything you can uh, kind of think of is in there, except for, like, military and aircraft, because it's a build-a-monster contest. But yeah, lots of fun stuff. Dioramas, you can build dioramas. Wolfman versus Frankenstein, or Zombie Apocalypse, which is really popular right now. Everybody wants to be in a zombie apocalypse. Come on. <laughs> but it's my uh, one and only kind of Halloween contest. So, and I know a lot of, um, like, I belong to a model car club. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, everybody in the model car club knows who I am, but I haven't been there in, like, a long time. Because it's in Calgary, and they do it on a Saturday night, and my wife's always working Saturday night, so... Yep, that's basically our fun. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I know a lot of those guys in there, they also build the monster kits. It's sort of like this collection they have. So, oh yeah, and then Ed Roth kits and stuff would be in that too. So again, basically everything we're building in this group build, you could almost just take it over and put it right into that build a monster contest that I'm running. The only thing is, there is an entry fee on that one. It's not a group build. It's not like 
everybody hanging out and building models and having having a fun time just as a show and tell at the end. This is actually like, well, I'd say it's like mildly competitive contest, right? But I do actually make up awards and mail them out. And that little entry fee covers the uh, stamps and all that jazz. So it ends up being pretty nice. And a lot of people have entered it year after year after year. Mark McGovern being one of those guys. I don't know if anybody knows him out there. But anyway, okay, so there's that sandpaper into the top of the roof. You've got nine minutes left, and I'm amazed that my camera is actually keeping up with half an hour of footage. I had a friend that had one of these cameras, another YouTuber, and he told me that they are prone to actually shut down after a certain amount of time. But we're at the 20-minute mark, according to my camera. There's nine minutes left. Yeah, I guess it's about right. But, uh hasn't shut down yet, so we're doing pretty good. And I'm actually getting up into the roof. Maybe I can actually get this done in 10 minutes. Wouldn't that be nice? Ah, there's still some sink marks in there, so I could, uh, I could flock that, I guess, if I got some flocking. I've got Games Workshop green, or not Games Workshop, but, uh, Woodland Scenics Grass. <laughs> put green grass inside. I'd have to paint the car green, like on the box. I wish I had that metallic green. That would be awesome. Hey, I should show you uh, some stuff I got here. It's not really for model cars, but it's still pretty cool. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm sanding the inside of these pillars, in case you're wondering. On top of the door here. Like that, you can see my little thumb right there. And then let's go up on this pillar. So here's a question. How many of you watching this video are, um, well, I guess, I, I don't know. Can I actually ask this question with <laughs> YouTube and COPPA laws? I'm, I'm just kind of wondering how many of you are beginner modelers? Hmm under the age or in the age of like 10 to whatever but i don't know if i can even ask that question <laughs> so if you're out there don't answer <laughs> like that's kind of self-defeating isn't it youtube and this coppa stuff i mean i'm not I'm not gonna sell somebody's information but you know like sometimes you just want to ask like is there anybody in the age group of blah blah but my analytics are starting to show that on YouTube. So, I mean, it's not too bad. At one point in time, it was only showing me that uh, my audience was from basically 45 to 60. And now it's starting to show... Oh, and all men. All men. So now it's starting to show that uh, there are some women watching the channel. I think Belinda is one of them. And uh, not to name names. <laughs> anyway. And... Um, it's also starting to show that, uh, like, there's a little sliver of people that are in their 20s and whatever in here. But, of course, the dominant group is uh, that 45 to 65. So, again, I think a lot of people are reliving their nostalgic past by watching these videos. And then there's a group of people that are learning stuff. Like, how to scrape down a seam line that's just automatically appeared right here. Whoa! And hopefully how not to slip off the side and gouge your model. Oof. Okay, that's... Oop. <laughs> Get around and stick the end of my finger into the knife blade. Oh boy. 24 minutes on my clock up there. And it looks like five minutes now over there on that clock. So we're getting motoring along here. You know, when I was younger, I used to be able to build a model and have it ready for model car show in exactly one month. Hopefully I'm not sandpapering around opening this up down here. Yeah, I used to be able to get these models done in one month and then basically store them up and uh, 
when the model car show came to town I could bring like a whole box load of models and enter them into all the different categories and everything like that and I'd win either gold silver or bronze and in fact it's kind of got to the point where I don't enter contests anymore because I'm always winning gold silver and bronze not to brag or anything like that it's just it just happens that way and it's kind of like there's no challenge to this anymore <laughs> So there is a, like this is up in Canada I'm talking about, but the guys in our model car club, they go to Salt Lake City, Utah every, every two years, or they used to anyway, for that big model show down there. And apparently they're saying that's the Super Bowl. I think it's a GSL. I'm not sure. Can't remember anymore. But they were saying that is like the Super Bowl of model car contests and it's very hard to actually win an award down there because it's like guys are making the the windows roll down on <laughs> window cranks and stuff like that in in like one or ho scale you know like like crazy stuff right so i always wanted to go down there but then i mean that that's kind of the the contest where if I'm winning gold, silver, and bronze at the regular local shows, and then you go down there and you don't win anything, but then you look at everybody's stuff and it's like, oh, you know, it kind of makes you want to go up that next level. You know, like it's a good, it's a good indicator. But when you're kind of stuck at the local gold, silver, and bronze thing, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to uh, benchmark one up, you know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just rambling here. <laughs> anyway, you know, some guys say build for fun, build for fun. But I like to build for contest level. You know, I like to, to challenge myself and, and build, you know, higher quality every time. Benchmarking, you know learning from what I did before and then moving up one more step and then going back and you know if I'm uh, entering a model show and it's kind of got semi-open judging you know like they don't kick everybody out of the hall <laughs> I like to uh, kind of listen in on when the judges are talking about it especially when they're around my model and they're saying you know well, look at that one it's it's uh you know not that good or something you know then then i can kind of figure out okay where did i go wrong and then uh, in the next year build a different model but use whatever the judges said from the year before and then build that one better you know and then maybe win like that that kind of challenge is what i like Okay, we got two minutes on the clock here, and I am so close to getting this sanded out and perfected. That's good. That's really good. wonder what Danny the dog will say when I show him this thing. I think hopefully he'll like my progress. I don't know. <laughs> I still have these little seam lines up front here, and I'm going to have to get some running out of time. So what I'll have to do is just... Just check them against my uh, 57 Chevy book and remove them on my own time. But that's only going to be like a couple of seconds because all I need to do is just cross sand, cross sand them off, and that should smooth it up. Could even take my knife here and just scrape them off. But overall, how's that for half an hour? See, I must still have a bit of my old youth in me. <laughs> Able to get the seam lines out of here and sand this thing this is almost ready for paint now i don't think i'm gonna actually show painting this but uh, i can show getting ready the parts and then maybe do a here's what it looks like painted afterwards what do we got here oh i think was that 41 seconds on the clock i don't know getting close can i do it oh my goodness <laughs> i think i have uh, I'll get a finer sandpaper. So there it is, 320. I wrote it on the back here because 
the numbers are actually on the rest of the sheet. I get a big sheet of sandpaper and cut it down for my sanding pad. So anyway, there we go. And again, like I say, we're running out of time, so I gotta get rid of those little top seam lines on my own time. But how's that? Look, we've got all that flash off of there, and now this thing is feeling nice and smooth. And we still gotta figure out, whoops. Oh, there's the timer. What kind of color this thing should have? Okay, that's annoying. Okay, there's the body after I completely sanded everything down. I did look and there is a ridge on the top of these fenders, but you know, for this uh, cartoon car, I've just basically sanded off those seam lines. Again, turned out pretty nice. I have noticed some kind of lumpy areas in here, just, you know, slightly lumpy. So, I mean, this thing is not designed to be absolutely bone perfect as far as the body goes, but overall, I think for my first half hour in this contest, or group build, pardon me, I think I did pretty well. What do you think? Boy, Trevor, you got a lot done today. That's looking really slick. Well, thank you very much, Danny. I did my best and I did get pretty far today, didn't I? So if you guys want to check out how far I get next time, click on this video up here. And if you want to check out that Monster Hobbies Build a Monster Contest and see what that's all about, check out this video down here. And until next time, I wish everybody a lot of luck on carrying on with their group build. And until next time, happy model building.